huge pressure on Theresa May, isn't there, to make some headway before this, this deadline, Kevin, next month, uh, which has been set by the EU. Do you think it's going to happen? That's right, because she needs to start the talks on what Britain's trade relationship will be with the other 27. If you don't start them in December, companies early next year will start to make plans to move people out of Britain into the other 27. It's absolutely crucial. And she's still got those three hurdles to get over. One is the rights of uh, European citizens in Britain after Brexit. That should be solvable. The second is what do you do with Ireland, Northern Ireland, because it has that 300-mile land border with the Republic of Ireland, which will still be in the European Union. That is incredibly difficult. And then thirdly, the question of the divorce payment. Offered nearly 20 billion, going to double that quite easily because we've got a lot of agreements. Uh, you've got to pay for... Whenever anyone gets divorced or moves out of a house, they know they'll have to settle the bills. That's what we're doing, and it could go even higher than that. It sounded, Joey, uh, that uh, the, the response to mm. David Davis not saying it was only going to stay at 20 billion, and actually he would answer the question uh, in a week or so as to how much we'd be willing to pay, that seemed to go down quite well uh, with the EU to suggest that actually we might be a little bit more pliable with the amount we're going to pay. Well, they've made it clear that there does have to be more money on the table. I think people might ask mm. themselves, well, why, why is it so important to get this done like th this month and in December? Mm. There's a long way to go <coughs> yet, isn't there? But actually, when you look at the timetable, there are reasons why if you don't make progress now, the whole thing really could unravel. The issue is that you've got all these lawyers pouring over things to try and make that, uh, make further moves. But the main issue is that this has to go to Parliament. So it has to be ratified. And we know with what's going on in the UK Parliament how complicated that is. If you can't get these things in early, and that means sorting this out at this stage, then the whole thing really could, uh, could unravel. But you have to wonder with what David Davis was actually doing with this speech. Why is he making a speech like this? Why is he going to Germany? What's he actually got to offer? All he's got to offer at the moment is uh, warm words, really. Uh, warm words that in end up rather rebounding on him because when he says talk, talk about putting politics before mm. prosperity, all the people in the audience say, hang on a minute, isn't that what you're doing or what mm. the UK has done? Uh, and you may have seen all the journalists were all applauding one of their number when uh, when he said that the whole thing in, in the UK is chaotic. Well, Angela so Merkel was going to be the speaker originally at this conference, but she's pulled out because she's trying to form a, co a coalition. Uh, mm -hmm. David Davis is the B Act. Mm. He's the standing. <laughs> So is Theresa May's idea of picking off like the Swedish Prime Minister, Polish leaders, talking to people independently to try and sort of drive a wedge between them and get some like individual allegiances? It's, a, it's classic a, playground tactics, actually, isn't it? It, it, it is. <laughs> you hope to divide and rule, mm. and it's it's a good idea. Give it a go. It's quite smart. But the problem is the other 27 are quite united. Mm. There's a club of 28. We are the ones that have voted to, to leave. The other 27 are looking at, us, looking at us thinking you're mad doing this because you know you'll damage your own economy, you'll damage your security. Why are you leaving your neighbours? So it's, it's going to not get very, very far, and it's why she's about to double the offer. And David Davis, listening to him last night, there's a note of desperation. When you get a politician saying to other politicians you shouldn't play politics with prosperity... Well, we're doing that. We are doing that in Britain, as Joey says. There is one issue where, obviously, we do have a very close mm. ally, which is the Republic of Ireland, over the border between the Republic and, uh, and Northern Ireland. Yes. So, so it's not difficult and to... And Boris Johnson's going to Dublin today, isn't he, yeah, to try and, and, and sort of talk about Yes, that. and it's, it's not difficult to get support on specific issues. The problem is that the issue looks so insoluble that it doesn't really matter uh, who is actually on your side. Mm. That it, it's really hard to pick a way through. I, I think we've lost an ally now, actually, on that border, because the Republic is all of a sudden saying to the other European countries, you've got to stand with us because they don't want a firm border again, which will come in some shape or form when we leave the European Union because they're worried about peace in Ireland. Mm -hmm. and, and the men in balaclavas with guns are never that far away. They haven't. All of them put away their balaclavas and guns. They are mm -hmm. still there, as you see, somebody with a pipe bomb on Remembrance uh, Sunday mm -hmm. and so on. You've got to be very careful. 